this report also breaks things down by industry. Uh, what you talked about it is already scary, but can you walk us through which sectors are getting hit hardest by AI bot traffic and what that looks like in practice for areas like publishing, commerce, or even more sensitive industries like healthcare or financials? Yeah, we talked a little bit about publishing and, and they're really trying to figure out, you know, is their revenue model sustainable? What do they need to do to, to react to this new environment? You know, commerce is right behind them. In fact, I'd say, you know, there are, are more than 25 million bot requests during a two month observation period um, that we saw here at Akamai and that is because, again, commerce is leaning into this early. Uh, just like with APIs, commerce was one of the first to implement and most hit because they're moving their value. They're moving revenue generating capabilities into large language models. And so now that I'm interacting with the commerce sites, Gen AI instance, the criminals right behind me doing that same thing, trying to monetize that. And so I think they're one of the, the hardest hit. Right behind them, more than 90% of the AI bot triggers when health, in healthcare are attributed to scraping activities. And a lot of these are from search and training bots, not so much active fraud, but a lot of that reconnaissance out there. And, and so I wanna be careful when I say healthcare. I say healthcare and, and most of us think, oh, hospitals, but it's pharmacy, it's medical devices, it's healthcare insurance. So, I mean, this is an entire, I should say healthcare sector to be better, you know, more inclusive. And so as you look across all of that, it's actually, you know, stealing healthcare information on the, the insurance side is one of the more profitable areas for cyber criminals. So all of this is very critical um, and, and you just, you know, they're not hit as much because the sector isn't as big as commerce, but they're almost hit more on that scraping side. FinServe, again, um, you know, more than 80% of AI bots in the financial services are training and, and uh, search bots, but a lot of that scraping activity, competitive scraping, looking for opportunities to do other kind of fraud. Um, and so all of this is, is every industry we're seeing is, is fairly heavily impacted. And then I won't talk about it here, but don't forget that if you download the report, if you're industry, interested in different regional insights, we have a lot of the different regional breakouts as well. Since we are talking about some of these uh, critical industries like uh healthcare, regulatory industries, how should companies in these, especially, these are very, very sensitive industries. And you also gave examples when we call our healthcare, it's not just, you know, those uh, records. Uh, how should they approach Gen AI challenges so that they stay compliant on privacy and AI side, but are also able to innovate and defend effectively against fraud and abuse? So it's like balance, uh, to be compliant, to be able to protect themselves at the same time, being able to move faster, not like, hey, no, we are shutting all the doors. We are not touching AI at all. That is not going to happen. Yeah, I, I think it's a fool's errand to try to say, we're just not going to use it. Um, you know, I, I truly do. Uh, we'll often see some heavily regulated uh, industries a little slower to uh, implement, um, you know, commerce uh, is regulated for, for credit cards. Um, but other than that, you know, they're probably less regulated than some of these. And so what we see is, um, first of all, this principle. If, if you're trying to put compliance around this, at a high level, what is your goal? And you want safe, transparent, fair, and accountable systems. So you see that through a lot of this regulation. And the second half of this is it's based on impact. If, again, if I'm buying a toothbrush, and I keep talking about that because I just read an article that used that example, so you're just going to get a lot of toothbrush examples today, unfortunately. But uh, if I'm buying a toothbrush, the impact on me isn't very high. 
if I'm applying for a mortgage, if I'm applying for a credit card, then the impact is very high. And so based on the impact, then I'm going to be held more accountable. And that's that's simply where it's going. And, and a lot of that is, you know, coming out in these regulations. So the first regulations, again, Europe is almost always a leader in this area. The first thing we saw was a European Union's AI Act. Here in America, the National Institutes of Standard and Technology has an AI uh, you know, documentation. Uh, both of these are good places to go plagiarize, to make your own policies, to think about your own framework. Uh, I'm a big fan of using those things. Colorado, where I live, is one of the first states to implement a state law. So just like you saw with privacy, you know, you saw a number of states implement privacy laws since we didn't have a federal privacy law. We're seeing that same thing start with AI laws. So if you want to see an example of what's happening in the United States, you can, you know, look for some, some general articles on Colorado and their attempt to implement this. And it is very hard to implement this in a way that, that makes sense. So what we recommended in this report was kind of a program approach. So first thing you want to do is you want to establish uh, coordination. Your, your legal and compliance teams, your risk management council, if you're a large company, your cybersecurity teams, your vendor management team, and your IT team. It is a team sport. You need to coordinate across all of those to make sure you're doing things correctly. You need that tiered assessment. Going back to impacts we talked about, you know, stuff that has high impact that we might be in a lawsuit, class action lawsuit for, that's what we want to pay attention to. You want model transparency. So data lineage maps, validation and testing reports. Again, the the AI Act and the NIST have a you know documentation around this. But ultimately, I need to be able to do an audit. I need to do a cyber investigation. And if I didn't build that in up front, you're not going to be able to do that. So you need to design those capabilities with your large language model. Adopt a privacy pre preserving capability. So hashing, tokenization, encryption, those basic principles of privacy, you know, as long with access control and all those basic principles, we still need to implement those as we implement large language models. Uh, you can't protect what you don't know about. So continuous monitoring and, and some kind of a feedback loop to validate that. And finally, you know, cross-functional oversight. We talked about that team up front. It needs to be, if you're in a larger organization, a little bit more formal so you can actually show what you did from an oversight. Does all that make sense?